Okay, so we're going to talk about a couple things that are mandatory if you have one of the new 462s. One of them is resetting the carburetor slash controller slash electronic fuel metering that these particular saws have. There's a way that you're supposed to do that. Um, you basically start it up after you put the choke on and you let it idle essentially for about 60 seconds and then you stab the throttle wide open and it's going to run for a period of time maybe about 30 seconds or so and then it's going to start to clean itself out uh, and then it'll kind of start to act a little bit more normal um, and then you can let it come off of high idle essentially so it's probably better demonstrated and shown I guess than discussed so here we go the 462s are a known quantity to um, top out at about 13,560 once the interrupted spark kicks in they're probably another thousand RPMs higher where it actually like cuts out the spark but because of the intermittent um, signal coming through the lead it registers at about 13,500. I don't know exactly how many missed cycles are in the process, um, but there's a, a few of them for sure. So let's check this carburation thing out a little bit. up about 20 seconds and she came up on the high idle so it's essentially now we've reset it her to the stock or default position technically the controller is what they call the new uh, coil system since it's not only running the spark to the spark plug through the lead but it's also controlling the metering in the solenoid that's in the carburetor. So that's the first thing that's mandatory with one of these that you need to take care of. Okay, so we reset the carburetor to the default mode. We're going to warm this thing up a little bit. We're going to take a couple cuts and then we're going to talk about what you need to do with the second half of this operation.
essentially I built this saw two years ago. Um, I've had it since November of 2017. This was the first one that I did, the Psycho Zip Kit. I went about as far as I wanted to um, with the initial one, which was mine, um, just to see what we could get. I built some after this that run a little stronger. We're going to show some videos of one in particular um, before when it was first with the Insano SS and then I took it apart and went to the next level with it. Um, it actually runs a little stronger than mine, but mine's cut like, I don't know, maybe about 500,000 board feet too, so it has a few miles on it at this point. But anyway, the second part of the equation that you're going to want to definitely do this is like kind of the mandatory thing if you're going to run a little bit longer bar and what we see here is the same 30 inch Samora lightweight bar with the same full comp Windsor chain that we've been using in some of the other testings with uh, the five saw off that we did um, recently anyway um, stops on this thing are 48 to 52 about depending since I do those by hand but anyway conceptually the oiler control bolt which is in the bottom of the oiler sticks out um, we're getting kind of running out of daylight at this point but in the hole right here for this particular model um, maximums over here minimums over here so basically the control bolt will rotate Unfortunately, uh, probably an environmental restriction thing or conscience, conscientiousness, however you want to say that word, we're conscious of the environment, let's say. Um, there's a roll pin that's located in the bottom that doesn't allow the control bolt in the oiler in the 462s to actually do the full amount of rotation. You only get about, oh, probably about this much. And what you can do is get a little drift. Doesn't take much. And you're going to have to have some light. And you stick it in there and you're just pounding lightly, gently. You're just tapping essentially. You're not actually trying to cognitively readjust somebody's cranium, so to speak. And that roll pin only has to go in about maybe a couple millimeters, three sixteenths of an inch, probably way max. Um, not very far, just until the roll pin meets the surface of the casting of the housing itself, which is not very far, and that will allow you to fully adjust the control bolt through its rotation. Now, if you're running a little bit longer bar, 30, 32 or whatever, you're probably going to want to do that. If you're running a little short bar, like a... 20 or maybe 24 even you probably don't actually need to do anything but like I said the two mandatory things if you're going to run a little bit longer bar well the one mandatory thing for that long bar situation is take care of the adjustment screw stop technically the roll pin full range of motion on the rotation from the control bolt the other part of the equation is you want to definitely reset to the factory default mode once you get your saw the 462 especially after you zip the thing so the two mandatory operations for that saw we just kind of covered so one of the other considerations a guy has to keep in mind when he's running these newer saws they're actually coming with a different filter element for the fuel we'll take a quick look here I'm thinking you can see that color differential. Now, the element that we're looking at right there is actually a finer mesh than what we were seeing on some of the earlier versions. And one of the things that they're doing to try to combat the problem that they're having with the solenoids, basically that's what's in the carburetor body metering the fuel, getting plugged up with small particulates so they change the mesh on the screen 
and you guy has to be careful and change those out a little more often because they'll get plugged and then you're going to end up running in a little bit of a lean situation now I have that under good authority from a super awesome mechanic that I've known since about 1984 I never asked him if I could mention his name so I won't but he knows that he helped me out with that little tidbit of information and I'm passing that along to everybody out there so some of the 461's come the same way um, you just have to check your filter and make sure or technically verify which element you have and if it's the orange one be conscientious swap it out a little more often thanks for watching this session have a blessed day wherever you might be on God's green earth